Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 207. Today is a very special day. If you are listening to this on September 11th, 2023, it's officially been eight years since I launched this show. At the time of this recording, I'm 32 years old. That means, mathematically speaking, I've spent a quarter of my life thus far doing this. And let me tell you, it's been the most personally and creatively fulfilling thing I've ever done. If you've been here since the beginning, or if this is your first time listening, thank you. Thank you so much for stopping by. The most valuable thing you can give someone is your time, and it is not lost on me. To commemorate such a milestone, today's guest is the wonderful Max Randolph. Not only is he an incredible blacksmith artist, he's one of the nicest, most genuine people I've ever met. Truly, it's people like him that are the reason this show exists. In this episode, we talk about him growing up on a cattle ranch, how he got started working with metal, the importance of passion in life, his design process, the piece he's most proud of, creating his character Beery for The Unexpected Party, and so much more. Max is amazing, and I'm so excited for you all to get to know him. So that being said, let's jump right into this, my friends. Without further ado, please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 207, with Max Randolph. Theme song time. Tuesday going you know it's going good i picked up some uh you know like some steel just doing work i feel like that should be if you ever write a book i picked up some steel would be a great like literal and <laughs> metaphorical summation of you as a person oh that's fun that's let's workshop fun this max <laughs> yeah right no I, I like the way this idea is going <laughs> yeah i and that oh my god what an opening line imagine i picked up some steel <laughs> uh, that's that's the beginning of a tale if I've ever heard one. Absolutely. Oh, I, I can see this is going to go very well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but good. You got you got your stuff in. Things are going well. Yeah, came in from the shop. I got a uh, just be wrapping up this like iron oak project here pretty yeah. quick. Yeah, really excited to get out of the shop so I can start on more fun stuff. Do you like how far? How many projects deep are you when you're working on one? Like, are you setting up the next one and the next one while you're working on a single one, or do you like oh, yeah. work on more than one at once? Yeah, I'm usually about a year or two out. Dude. Yeah, it's 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 a lot. Well, in it's it's a blessing and a curse, right? Like sure. I'm very grateful to have an over overwhelming amount of work, but in the same rate, like I can't be very present. Like it's all just like old inspiration, old designs, you know, and I've already built it in my head over and over by the time I even begin. So it's just, it's almost old news by the time I get to building it. So oh, I'm excited sure. in the future, uh, you know, not booking myself out so far. So I'm right. a little bit more present, a little bit more, a little bit more engaged, you know? When you have like those ideas that are so long in the making, do you ever forget like, oh, right, this is, this was the thing that past me was thinking about. <laughs> oh, exactly. Oh gosh. And I feel, I feel like there, I'm, I'm a bit of a dichotomy where, you know, like me working with a client max is like oh yeah and we could have this girder that goes around and it, yeah. <laughs> you, you turn this little wheel and it you know gears move this whole entire contraption around and then it of course then uh you know eclipses with different colors of stained glass oh it'll be tremendous and i'll design it and then all of a sudden like now building max is, has to <laughs> look at these plants that's like you want me to build what? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm I'm with you there. I I always say past Brian is an idiot. Present Brian is trying his best. Future Brian, he knows what's happening. He's yeah, figured well, it out. <laughs> I'm I'm glad you're on the right curve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like I don't know if this is gonna work. God, I hope so. Our future Brian is not going to enjoy this one. Oh, that's too funny. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I'm in that weird, I guess, personality type, for lack of a better term, where I'll do things for the story, which is not, I can't legally endorse that. You know, it's like, this is not a good idea, but if I survive, this is going to be really fun to talk about. <laughs> Around the campfire, I can uh, regale yeah. people of, <laughs> of my past yeah. mistakes. <laughs> exactly. As long as there's no law enforcement present, you know, we'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good. You're in good company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
So you're you're in Paso Robles? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, you nailed it. Well, I mean, I practiced El Paso de Robles, but you know, ah. it, but you know when it's uh, you know you know cultural like just kind of local nomenclature. Yeah, it's just Paso Robles. Paso, Paso Robles. I like the other one. How do you say it? Paso de Robles. Yeah, it's the Pass of the Oaks. Um, it's Ooh. in Spanish. Oaks, yeah. Max. I know. Hey, you see Max. a pattern here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking up what you're laying down here. Atta baby. Yeah, it's. <laughs> It's beautiful here. It's wine country. There's 400 wineries here, and it's not that big of a place. It's a little town. Uh-huh. And when I grew up here, um, it it was a, it was a cow town. It was nothing but just vi- uh, not even vineyards back then. There's a couple. There's a couple like hundred year old you know estate vineyards out here, but uh, it was primarily nuts. It was nuts and cattle. And oh. I grew up on a cattle ranch. And oh, cool. Um, yeah, and just grew up in a, a very simplistic way. And then they realized that, like, oh, my gosh, this is pretty much a new Rhone Valley. You know, it's pretty much France or Italy here, yeah. you know, climate-wise. Sure. And it's got these this beautiful calcareous stone, which is great for making wine. And, um, yeah, this, like, wonderful tourist destination just kind of sprouted all around me. So I'm I'm very grateful. Wow. I definitely enjoy the fruits of of my area for sure. <laughs> <laughs> As you should, just out of principle. It's right there. Oh, you know, yeah. When in Rome. Yeah, yeah. It's research. That's what it is. That's right. You know, you have to try as much wine as possible. I get it. Mm-hmm. I'm nothing if not an enabler of a good time, Max. Oh, see, we're going to get along just fine, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> but a cattle ranch, is that straight up like getting up five o'clock in the morning, cowboying oh, yeah. it up? Yeah, just born, like that's exactly what you're imagining is what it is. And um, it was nearby this lake, Lake Nacimento. And, oh, cool. uh, and it was gorgeous country. Like I'm so grateful that I was raised to kind of understand how at least our level of manufactured nature works. Sure. You know, you're, you're able to watch uh, totally. cycles go by where you have calves and you see them grow up into cows and steers and, and you're able to see like cycles pass. And um, I'm very grateful for all the knowledge, you know, just how to tie a knot, how to how to just do all sorts of stuff. But there was a lot of downtime with that type of life. Mm-hmm. So I, I spent a lot of time in my imagination that way. So break this down. I've not, I lived on a farm in North Carolina, but it was like my dad's like version of a zoo essentially. So we oh, didn't do it like we didn't like sell anything. I mean, we had emus. We had like 50 oh, emus. Fun. We had 50 rias, which are essentially like white emus. We had an ostrich, peacocks, like just weird, just weird stuff. It wasn't for any sort of like reason other than my dad wanted to do it. Sounds like you got like a bunch of velociraptor land or something. Dude, <laughs> if he could have caught one, we would have. <laughs> <laughs> but that said, did you like what what are the duties on a cattle ranch that you're doing? Oh gosh. Well, it's a, it's a lot of just maintaining fence lines and it was a very oh. like hilly forested kind of place when you know there's cliffs and every time the lake would drop all of a sudden your fence line grew. And oh. um so you're always maintaining fence and then every now and then you'd round them all up for shots and processing all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we it was like 5000 acres out there. It was a it was a Dude. big It was a big operation. And it was just like my brother and my dad Wow, that's cool. Are you good on a horse? Actually, we ran quads. Um, what? I did grow up on horses, but uh, yeah, I guess my my old man, he's not much of a rider, so we went, <laughs> we grew up on quads. That counts. That mm. counts. You're riding something. Yeah, you know, it's a modern horse. It's it's exactly it just requires yeah. gasoline. Yeah, <laughs> literal <laughs> gasoline as opposed to like hay gasoline. Exactly. I get it. I get it. How long did you do that? Well, we lost the lease. Um, in the, this is fine. Like we got out of the out of the um, industry at actually a really good time. It which was nice. perfect timing because that was about when I was maybe oh gosh, I don't really dig into my my past very often, but maybe around like ten. Okay. Or so. Okay. Sure. But that was when suddenly I was you know I had more time on my hands, and that's when I started welding and you know getting into metalwork. Oh. So it kind of worked out a little perfect. Yeah. Did you? What kind of stuff were you into as a kid? Oh, oh my gosh. Well, I, I don't even know where to start. I, <laughs> I, was, I mean, I was definitely a hell of a kid, a big pain in the butt. But um, same, same. It's just really full of it, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> a lot of energy, very mm-hmm. rambunctious. Um, but I think the worst of it all was very imaginative. Yeah. Um, same. Well, like, oh gosh, where do I even start? 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, how about this? I'll start at the beginning. Yeah, was, great place. <laughs> oh, gosh, Brian. So, I, I uh, yeah, so my entire life, I was always just imagining things. You know, I was always drawing, uh, creating castles out of, you know, uh, light, you know, sandstone and, you know, carving all that out. Just you know, always in my own world. Yeah. And, uh, and then it's funny, I don't really look back on it very often because it was actually pretty a, a very tumultuous childhood. There was a lot of, you know, like court, and police stuff, a lot sure. of abuse and stuff. But I don't say that. Another thing we have in common. <laughs> no, I think we're a kindred buddy. I think um, so. But I say that with a big smile on my face because I wouldn't change a thing because yeah, it forced me to create a world within myself, you know, where it was safe, where it, um, mm -hmm. where I could just go on my own adventure. And that's kind of where it all began. I was always creating and I was always just in, I was always somewhere else, right. even no matter where I was. And uh, when I started to build things, like really build things um, primarily out of steel, that's when I could like, like suddenly bring artifacts back into the real world with me. Oh, you know interesting. I mean? Yeah. Like I, I just, it was so lonesome in this like, really incredible place that I was able to go to almost think of your personal Narnia. I think mm -hmm. we all have one, but somehow we lose it in Agreed. adulthood, which is total BS. If you ask me, Agreed. I'm on a mission to kind of re rekindle that in people, Yeah, um, you know, and uh, yeah, it, it just, everything came in alignment. There was never a plan. I would never take anything back. Sure. I was just trying to like, just going by the seat of my pants, buddy. <laughs> I dude, same, same. I found Good. that, the best people are the ones who have been through the most. It's weird, right? It it really is. It's one of those, like, I haven't really cracked the code just yet, but there is something about you find someone else. There's like this, it's in the eyes where you can tell like, oh, I've been through a lot of shit and oh, so have you. But <laughs> somehow it didn't break us. It gave us a perspective. And I found oh, that yeah. the, the best ones are the people whose perspective led to gratitude oh buddy brian you're a poet right bud. am i am i right no you're right and <laughs> sometimes i mean it, it, there's definitely the odd chance it's gonna break you and then definitely. you're spending the rest of your life taking it out on everybody else you know mm -hmm. going the big bad world which i'm also a firm believer you could have just the best situation possible mm -hmm. but you're gonna get out of it with trauma. You know the world yep. is gonna kick the dirt in your face. It it, it doesn't Facts. matter. Facts. Who, who you are, it's gonna get you. You know it's yep. here to challenge you. But but you're right. You know like the people I, I connect most with have really gone through the ringer. Yeah. And there's no comparison. You know like everyone True. experiences things differently. That's the humanity though, right? It's like yeah. as as different as we all are at base elements, we're all the same. And we can oh, connect absolutely. on being human regardless. And it's also a lovely practice of empathy. That's actually why I love TTRPG so much is yes. it's just such a practice of empathy to, to dive into another consciousness, you know, different from your own and see through their eyes. Totally. You know, totally. think about an argument, you know, it's, it's really sometimes difficult to empathize with a oh, yeah. verbal opponent. Uh-huh. Especially if you really believe and really oh. feel your part. It's like, ooh. There's more. There's something mm -hmm. else going on here with this existence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to get philosophical. I can already yeah, tell. we are. We're dancing, Max. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so you drew as a kid. That makes sense why you're so good at it now. Oh, quit it. So do, do, you, know facts. Why, do you know why I draw, draw my work these days? I'm about to. Tell me. But I'm going to tell you, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> so I always thought people had... The capacity for like mental pictures, really complex three-dimensional mental pictures. Mm -hmm. I did like that. I, I just assumed everyone saw the same things on the same description. Sure. Well, I had no idea how wrong I was. <laughs> you know what? I, uh, oh my goodness. It, because I would like sketch something out really quick, you know, uh, an entry doorway, mm -hmm. you know, a little facade. And uh, I'm like, yeah, and there'll be some corbels and, you know, there'll be a frame that go in here and then I'll layer that and I'll just scribble some stuff down and I would see their eyes glaze over and I'd lose the commission. <laughs> it's like, dang it. Because I never like mixed my metal work with my drawing before. Uh, I, I just, I never made that connection. I just sure. thought everyone else could see it. Right. So I started actually drawing the, the work 
not for myself because I see it plain as day. <laughs> like I can walk around it. I can see it upside down. It, it's, it's easy for me. Yeah. But I realized that's actually a, you know, a, a bit of a gift. Yeah. So I started drawing them for, for my clients and now I really enjoy it because now it's part of the process. Wow. Did you, did you go to school for drawing or you just like winged nah. it and kept doing it? Just, just did it a lot, but, it, but my heart was very different back in the day when I was like, you know, from four to, Oh, I, honestly, from like three to about 18, it was nothing but like shirtless buff warriors riding on yeah. the backs of dragons with a battle axe and <laughs> all that good stuff. Your alter you ego. Know. I get it. Well, just like, I don't know, like the fantasy captured my attention. It just seemed like such a better place to be than here. Yep. Once again, we're cut from the same cloth. Oh, Brian. Yep. Yeah. I, I was born in 91. I imagine we're similarly aged. Yeah. 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 So no, by a couple of years. So Lord of the Rings came out when I was like oh, 10. Changed everything. Woo! I can honestly say I am who I am today because of Aragorn. 100%. Because I was like, that's who I want to be. That is. And t- I'm in my 30s now. And I'm like, God, Aragorn wouldn't do that, would he? You need a bracelet. <laughs> what would Aragorn do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's oh, nuts. Oh, man. You're so right, though. And then you hit those epiphanies later on in life, like recently for me. I'm way too introspective. Mm. I spend a lot of time in my head as well. And I'm like, why am I like this? Like, what am I doing? Okay. All right. And like trying to figure me out, you know? <laughs> Reverse engineer yourself. <laughs> exact All the time. And like, I'm hoping to be, you know, the idea is growth. So like every five years, you're a different person for the better, ideally. Yeah. But there's like, oh, but then you'll unlock things. and You'll be like, wait a second. Why did I like Aragorn so much? Oh mm-hmm. no, he came from bad stock. Oh no. <laughs> These oh, are connections I thought I would make. <laughs> well, and it's oh, it's fascinating. So, like, I'm a firm believer in this. I hope this ties in. I might be rambling here. That's but I'm all a firm I do. believer in accidental mentors. Yes. You know, because you, yes. you're, you're born with your family, right? Like, that's just what you got. Yep. But also, it could be a shop teacher. It could be your AP math teacher. It could be, mm-hmm. you know, a coach. It could be someone in your life that accidentally or friggin' Aragorn. Yeah. That without, you know, without trying, just totally accidentally and serendipitously, completely inspired the man, woman, or whoever you are to become. That's kind of the magic of art, though, isn't it? Oh, gosh. Absolutely. It's so cool. Like, how is this a thing? How's this, how's this real? Because it is, you know, oh, and like gosh, the effects what? are real. And like, what? It's so cool. It's just so cool. I love it. Aragorn, I'm trying to think. I think I was, now I, this might be a big surprise to you, but I think Gimli was my guy. Yeah, I could see it. Oh, it's <laughs> it sounds so cliche. Little 10-year-old you with your beard. And that was back when we were like <laughs> kids. So, I mean, that was way before beard and bearding was happening. No, no, no. You came out the womb with it, Max. Don't lie to me. <laughs> I imagine your hair and the beard turned into the the swaddle. Just oh my god! You. <laughs> yeah, just holding the bottle, just full beard yeah. and hair. <laughs> You're lucky I can't draw because I'd be drawing that. <laughs> yeah, fan art, get on it. Yeah. Oh my god! I you want to know something? I actually shaved my head my whole life. What? Really? Yeah. So what made you grow it out? I, when I found steel, I, it's the weirdest thing. So really. Um, Oh, I feel like I'm talking about myself a lot, but I guess that's what that's I'm supposed the point. to do, right? <laughs> what do you oh, think I'm here so for, Max? <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go. So, yeah, well, I was in the football. I was, you know, kind of, I grew up like a redneck kid. So sure. I just buzz cutted my hair the my whole life because it was pretty unruly. It was really coarse and thick. It was like sure. otter hair. Like, you know, yeah. just, <laughs> my, uh, everyone in my family made fun of me for having like Brillo pad like, <laughs> hair. And, uh. I, I just, I fell in love. I fell in love with steel just right out of high school. And I just, I didn't realize my hair was curly for one. Sure. And, uh, and I just, just, I dove in, you know, face first and I, I just, ne- I never cut it. I haven't cut it since. Really? Like I was like 18. Yeah. That explains the majesty of it. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's just, I look back on my life and I don't think I've made like one like concise decision. Yeah. <laughs> I've just been like reacting to one thing after another and being very absent-minded and just being uh, like in my head. I sure. Guess. I look back and I like, I just stumbled my way through this. <laughs> in a way, 
I feel like that's being the most present because you're going with the ebb and flow. Oh, there you go. You Interesting. Know? So there is our, you know, separation. There that now we're two sides of a coin. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I, yeah. I think I'm not introspective enough. I'm just like just a laser pointer of consciousness where I, I can only see that one pinpoint. <laughs> Yes, exactly. See, this is the duo, right? It's like yeah. you got the brains and bronze thing. It's like, hey, listen, this is why it's happening. Also, yeah. I need to grow a bigger beard. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was just out of sheer laziness, my man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yin and yang this thing, Max. That's right. So steel, how did this happen? I'm going to assume it was shop. Actually, it was before shop. It was before high school. Ooh, so go on. Oh God, it's it's a it's a weird story. God, I'm in. These are my favorite okay. kinds. <laughs> all right, all right. So, my brother, I have a brother, love him cool. to death. His name is Steve, and uh, he 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 was also extraordinarily talented at building things. And he took to wood. He was a, he's a carpenter. He oh, still cool. is. Um, you know, he's a contractor, build homes and houses. I was on his crew for a long time. Nice to make my dream happen. Sure. And um, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna follow my brother's footsteps and. My old man, he uh, he he needed someone to like learn how to do metalwork, mm -hmm. and uh, I was like, oh well, yeah, well learn how to weld, sure. And then I was like, oh yeah. Then my first business was you know building barbecue pits because that was like part of the oh, the culture out here. Smart. Um, you know, Cowtown, you 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 have and there's you know, hunting and all that stuff. So sure, we did a lot of barbecue, and so it was just part of the thing, and that's what I knew. So I was building barbecue pits like crazy. Steel was a breeze. It just it just made a lot of sense to me. Then I could find out, like, oh my gosh, I can get it hot. And this is twenty some odd years ago, so no one was blacksmithing back then. It was a just about as dead of a trade as it almost can get. Sure. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, I can get it hot, and I can move it in any shape I want. Yeah. Because then I started blending what my you know my proclivity to drawing and you know being imaginative with the fabrication and the things. So I was like, oh gosh, this is amazing, cool. So I started like, you know, forging uh, little, you know, forged steel roses for my crushes in, cool. in school and stuff. There you and go. Like, oh, this, is, this is great, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These won't die. Well, this is the weirdest part is all of a sudden, like, I think it was my aunt. We had a get together or something like that. And then all of a sudden uh, she pulled me aside and she's like, you realize, because she was seeing what I was doing on like Facebook or something. Uh-huh. Like you realize like. Your grandfather, your great grandfather, your great great grandfather—they all came to this country as blacksmiths, right? What? And I was like, "No, what are you talking about?" So suddenly, there I am on this like national treasure, like family history hunt. Yeah, and I'm going back to old photos of of them in their workshops, like it, it, back in the 1800s. It's it was the most bizarre thing ever. I started tracking down their old tools. Um, from like uh, family members that had, had passed and then they went to, you know, their boyfriends or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and now they're like, I'm getting it from their children who are old, old people now. Yeah. And uh, it was, it was, it was just wild. I was on this like journey and uh, yet again, there was almost like no conscious like decision-making. I was just like, <laughs> yeah. I was just going with the flow. It's weird. Yeah. I took to steel, like, you know, moving steel by hammer, by like fish to water and, I don't know if there's something in the marrow. I don't know how much I believe when it comes to that. Sure. But it was very, uh, there was a lot of osmosis going on. It just made too much sense to me. Right. I didn't really have a teacher. I just kind of started. Dude, that's even cooler. I, it's like, weird, it's right? the most natural way to, do you know, have you ever heard of a thing called blood memory? Oh, well, yeah, uh, I've never heard that term before, but. It's like I, that I kind of thing. Believe there's memory in like DNA. Like they've proven yeah. that a little bit, right? I think so. There's like a big, like it, I'm an actor. So there's a big thing with acting is like, you know, playing certain roles and like why they really connect. And then you find out way back when you had this, like or a family member of yours had this experience. And the theory is that like, Oh wow. Experience both, you know, interests and good things, but also in some ways, trauma is passed yeah. down generationally, generationally. Absolutely. Well, and didn't they find those in like adopted kids too? Yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. Isn't that wild? It it is so wild, you know, because it's so un, you know, it's just not something not tangible. How do you yeah? How do you quantify that? Exactly. It's like there's there's something else. Like I don't know, yeah. I don't know what it is. I'm not smart enough, but there's something else other than like the physical 
that's like the mm. we don't you know luminous beings are we says yoda you know it's like we're not just oh, this absolutely oh i'm you a know? firm believer in it like we're not allowed to know everything how Agreed. boring would that be for real probably best we don't as well we'd be like oh Yo! god we'd probably <laughs> some, figure out how to capitalize on it <laughs> i <didn't> know <laughs> memory resorts yeah right exactly there. yeah <laughs> That's so cool though. Cause there's, and also the fact that you took to it, like there's something extra special there when you find like something that you absolutely love and something that you're good at where those two cross is like the sweet spot of like oh. real fulfillment. And the fact that you found it so cool. I feel so lucky. I I mean, really, yeah. really lucky. And now it's been a fun journey, you know, working with other people now and, and yeah. just, so I, for the longest time I was just, you know, in my shop alone mm -hmm. and every now and then i'd pop my head out of the sand and like and be social for a minute yeah <laughs> but nowadays it's been a lot of fun through social media trying to inspire others to do the same yeah you know, there's no code book obviously right but to just get people passionate about finding kind of their true north because we're not taught to do that you know it's true it's like true. that's one of my biggest passions is bringing kids into the shop at, you know for field trips yeah you know like from from charter schools to freak it like dude I, I recently had a troop of girl scouts you oh, know with cool. their like they're like squad leaders and all that stuff oh my yeah. god i had you know breaking down gender barriers having them swinging hammers against hot steel was the coolest thing that's awesome and just watching the spark like ignite oh i bet was it's just such a joy to be in the presence of kindled passion yeah see it you know oh my god it's like my favorite thing in the world and passion is like I tell people all the time, I'm like, if you find something that you're passionate about, run it down. Oh, yeah. Chase it with everything you have, because life is difficult out the box. So if you can <laughs> find something that really lights you up, go for it. Do, don't let anything stop you. Like, it's so special to have something to be passionate about. It it really is. Oh, my gosh. And, I, and it's so interesting, too, when you, especially when you form a bond. So, for instance, um. I do a thing every Sunday morning. It's called Tea Time. I love it. Um, where we do like a Zoom meeting. It's it's through my Patreon, but it's yeah, it's just a group of very creative, just people from all around the world. Just it's just it's just off the wall. Yeah. But we have like a weekly check in. We you know, we always celebrate each other's um, you know, triumphs. We're there for each other during times of trial, and uh, it's been fascinating to watch them finding passion. You, you now that like that's a huge part of what we're doing mm -hmm. together yeah just having you know conversations just like this and asking each other questions and having just good solid conversation that goes deep yeah and uh oh my gosh it's it's been really incredible watching you know a handful of them like realizing like i didn't realize i deserved passion my whole life right. i wasn't taught to seek <laughs> happiness yeah it's true and it's, it's such a crime it is that's why it's important. We got we're in this together. This Absolutely. is a thing. That's so cool. Oh, it's so much fun. So do you re, do you remember the first thing you ever made? The oh, there's no way. There's yeah. just, there's just no way. Like <laughs> it's I'm lost sure, to time. <laughs> I'm sure it's in a landfill. Like uh, yeah, right. just, <laughs> you know, you, you never like start being creative. You know, like there's a, I was always making stuff and um, mm -hmm. either it be wood, paper, just anything. Sure. And um. But the first, I, I'll, I will definitely remember one of my first like kind of eureka moments when it came to, you know, forging steel was this big old flower complete with like, uh, like spring held uh, hummingbirds. It was this big old like flower sculpture, about like four feet tall. And I gave it to my mom and, uh, and that's way back in the day. And I like cop copper coated it and then acid it, uh, sorry, like acidized so it turned those beautiful blues, blues and greens. But yeah, there's like little hummingbirds and you know butterflies. I was always into making things delicate, making sure. steel. You know, is it, I don't know. I grew up with, around like really like masculine people. Sure. Um, you know, cattle ranch. It was it was a very blue collar. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I just now that in like retrospect, like I said, there was never a plan. <laughs> uh huh. Is trying to find balance between you know hyper masculinity forging steel with a hammer and all this stuff but making it delicate making things precious making things really soft and even you know fe in the in the realm of feminine yeah um, i don't be probably because i was disallowed 
mm-hmm. you know, as a boy to, to celebrate those things. Totally. And now I'm almost kind of like trying to like re- retake that because it's all about balance. You know, we've already covered this. So yeah, I really like making just really beautiful, soft things out of steel. And yeah. So when like Forge and Fire comes around, like asking for, for, for like me to like participate, I'm like, nah, it's too, <laughs> it's too, it's too masculine. I, I know. Sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting out of whack. Like we want you to make a, uh, an axe that could cut through wood. It's like, what about a hummingbird? Like, nah, yeah, I right. mean, <laughs> there was definitely times in my life of just. And also, I swung really hard, especially like in you know in football and stuff. Really aggressive kid, dealing with a lot of anger issues. Sure. Um, and just like just a lot of energy. Yeah. Um, it's almost like my penance to, <laughs> yeah. to dial it back, you know. <laughs> But I definitely had a, a long spell where I was making huge battle axes and doing all that, all the viral stuff. But now I put that behind me. <laughs> I like it. I kind of see, you know, back to Aragorn. That's one thing I learned from him. That's sort of like true, in my opinion, the true form of like masculinity. 100%. Has a softness to it. Absolutely. You know, and it's like, I, that's what it was like, you know, you got emotions, probably why I became an actor it was like, oh, right. There's a side yeah. of me I need to experience, you know, we're allowed to have emotion. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. And it, it's so back asswards too. It is. And it's so funny because like, it takes so much courage yeah. to be vulnerable. Yeah. Way more strength than anything else. <laughs> it's the strongest and most brave thing you could do is be Agreed. delicate and be... <laughs> My Dare God. delicate, damn it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Do you, it's like, do you think the king of Gondor is weak? No, I didn't think so. And he's crying and singing. <laughs> That's right. Oh, and like, and if if you think that we're not bawling our eyes out, oh. when he says you bow to no one, I can hear the music. I got chills, damn 100% it. hundred <laughs> percent of the time. I've seen that movie a hundred times. Cry equally heavy every time. <laughs> An absolute disaster. Just yeah. a mess. <laughs> oh. Oh, same. God. <laughs> Do you, what's what's the worst burn you've ever got? Oh. Because you're working with fire. There's no way you haven't. Oh, yeah. You earn your licks for sure. There's, I mean, whole like inside of my hand uh, peeled off a couple times. Oh, no. I've gotten some nasty ones on my face before. I don't know how what? I don't have scars. I'm like, I heal <laughs> really well for some reason, which I hate because I like reminders, you know? Sure. <laughs> I'm like losing my scars on like, from like my past <laughs> mistakes back in the day. Right. Like, no, like, I need those. <laughs> this is my third face. I promise. <laughs> oh yeah. There's been some, there's been some real bad ones where it's like, you know, through all of your dermis, you know, or you're oh, like, yeah. into, like muscle tissue almost. Ooh, my God. Just from grabbing hot stuff or like stuff oh, yeah. falling on you. And you want to know something interesting. Yeah. I've told this fact a lot, but not here, of course. Yeah. <laughs> is you get burned so much worse by like an 800 degree piece of iron uh huh, versus like a 2000 degree piece of iron. Oh, why? So you can have this thing glowing orange hot, yellow heat. And the, the steel is slippery. If you touch it, if you bump into it, you just get skates across like you know, air hockey Whoa. because you're floating on a pillow of steam. This, the old oils in your hand are steaming at such a rate that you're not even touching the material. Oh, interesting. But if you touch like what's called black heat, which is like, that's the dangerous stuff, right? You don't know if it's hot or not. It's not giving you any visual cues. Yeah. And uh, you touch that stuff and it's sticky. Oh no. And it grabs a hold of you and man, your <gasps> you know, skin, skin stays on it. It's bad. <laughs> My so, God. Like when you're welding, you almost get burns way worse than if you're like forging and you know that thing is hotter than hotter than blazes. Wow. Interesting, right? Very interesting. Science. There's a, there's yeah. a, there's, a, there's a, a scientific word for it. I can look it up if we want, but I think it'll be more fun for your audience to be like, Oh, I know what that is. <laughs> yeah. And if they don't make them do it, that's right. All, th- all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, no. Well, the internet's forever. It'll be a lot. Dude, burns are also another thing that suck because it takes a second to register. You know, like if you put your hand on the stove, it's like it doesn't immediately hurt. It takes a minute for it like, to get to your brain to be like, you shouldn't touch that. And by then you're like, ah! Oh, the millisecond, you bet. Yeah. Oh, and, and that's Ooh. also another reason I never wear gloves is if your glove begins burning, it, it's that it's retroactive, just like you said. Oh. Um, and now you're like in the little miniature oven. That makes sense. It's like a reverse oven mitt. <laughs> okay. I was wondering, because all the videos I've watched of you, which I've seen every single one of them, I was like, there's oh. 
that man's not wearing gloves. I was like, do you have any feeling left in your fingers? Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> this might sound weird, but I like to be very like, I'm, I'm a very kinesthetic person, you know, very tactile. Oh yeah. Um, So I like to be able to feel the material. I like to feel texture. I like to, you know, is it talks to you a little bit? Yeah. Um, anyway, the more you have separating you two, it, it, I don't know. It's a, it's a big barrier. I like and, you know, plus sometimes it's it's way safer. Like if you're running wire wheels or any type of equipment, it's more safe to just, you know, get a little nick on your finger versus your whole arm getting pulled into it. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, fair point. Yeah. Any machinist or anything like that, they'll, they'll tell you. And the ones that won't are the ones missing the limbs. Exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's dark. That's dark. <laughs> <laughs> it's their fault. They were wearing gloves, Max. I didn't do this. <laughs> So you steel's your go-to. What other metals do you work with? Oh gosh, between brass and copper, I I want oh, bismuth. Oh, don't even get me oh, going. The bismuth crystals oh, are so cool. Bismuth, I have, I see such a l- just luminous future with bismuth. So, like for the last twenty some odd years, I've just been going from one commission to the next. I've never had like really much freedom besides the designing portion of this utilitarian object, you know, might let it be a doorway, a chandelier, but I haven't mm-hmm. had the freedom to be able to, to just build a sculpture, to just be able to build something from my mind. Sure. And I feel like that day is slowly encroaching. I cannot, cannot wait, but yeah, big tables of just solid, you know, just a geode of bism- bismuth where I, uh, you know, I'm doing like thousand pound liquid pours, um, where you're getting crystals the size of basketballs, you know, like I just cannot wait. Dude, I didn't know what bismuth was until I saw the fire pits that you were making with it in it. And I was like, <gasps> oh, you saw those. Yeah, dude, I've seen literally everything you've done oh, in the last that's, years. That's crazy. <laughs> all of it. I've seen everything. <laughs> wow. Well, th- thank you for your uh, for all the support. My goodness. Of course. It's what I do. I have a thing oh, where uh, I before I even ask someone to come on the show, I do at least like three weeks of research because wow. for me, my thing is I'm about connection, right? Like on a human yeah. level, like I know you from your work, but I want to get to know you. Oh, and Brian. in the research, I try and like, what is there something here? You know what I mean? That like I can't even explain because sometimes I'm like, yeah, just I don't know. Different vibes. I don't know if we'll get on you sure. immediately was like, OK. And then I had Dawn on and I was like, oh. Don, hook this up, please. <laughs> oh, and Don is such a terrific human being. I love He's that great. guy. Great. He's great. So you keep good company. I was like, all right, cool. I need to do whatever I need to do to blackmail Max. And it worked. <laughs> blackmail the blacksmith. <laughs> yes, exactly. That was my go-to. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I do got to know, is there a metal that you hate working with? Ooh. I've actually gotten into um, forging aluminum, which is really an interesting oh. process because yet again, it doesn't give you any cues. Um, oh. it, it just all of a sudden, you know, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. And all of a sudden it just blah, turns the oh. candle wax. <laughs> and like, we're talking to just a couple degrees difference between those two moments. Oh, So that's been fun. And um, honestly, there really hasn't been, some tool steels are a real pain. I used to make, um, uh, uh, I used to make a lot of knives. And I would make, cool. and there was these very specific ball bearings that I'd use. And they're about the size of like a, like a smaller apple. Okay. Big. And I'd get that thing hot. I'd let it soak for a long time. And I would take a 12 pound hammer and I would just swing on that thing as hard as you could. And you're hardly making a dent in it until you start finally working out into a bar. Whoa. You know, because I, I've never had a power hammer. I just, you know, you're talking to them. That's right. <laughs> Got two power hammers right here. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's masculine. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And I, I would just, I would, I was, I feel like it was part of my tuition, you know, I mean, just learning how to endure just crazy, crazy amounts of workload like that. Yeah. And, um, but those, those, those years are behind me. My goodness. That was such a pain. <laughs> <laughs> like if I never see that again, I'm good. Oh, well, yeah, I'd like bounce that, that bounce that sluggo off of that thing. Like it was a, a, a rubber band, you know? Oof. It was just like, you couldn't make a dent in the thing. Yikes. Is there a difference between metal smithing and blacksmithing? Well, like metal smithing, you know, it's, that's just your like full, anything metal, anything metal that is being moved by hand tools. Okay. Blacksmithing is primarily for like ferrous materials. 
you know, oh. black being that kind of carbon, that, you know, mill scale that sheds off during the forging process. Actually, the smith is, you know, rooted in smite to like hammer. Oh, yeah. And then like a silver smith, um, you know, obviously silver. And I think there's like a white smith that is, I believe, tin. Um, oh. there, there's a lot of different, uh, yeah. Copper smiths. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of different, um, uh, titles, I guess. Okay. I know what I learned today. Yeah. Blacksmiths is primarily your ferrous metals, you know, iron and steel. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. My heart belongs to, to steel. You don't really get much iron. It's, it's cold iron, mm-hmm. but it's primarily all like a 36, which is mild steel, My, steel about in, I don't know. We're talking, you know, uh, industrial revolution, world wars era, um, kind of that window of time. That's when steel became just super easy to, uh, reproduced because of this um, the refinery process. Steel was once pretty pretty rare and expensive, and then there was iron, which iron is pretty soft, you know, when it comes to like steel terms. Sure. And then uh, once refinery evolved, then it all just became steel. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Learn something new every day, buddy. I try my best. <laughs> <laughs> Do you you mentioned that like. You you started drawing your work because clients couldn't visualize it. Is that the same reason you started making the little like wooden models as well? Yeah. So sometimes like those things are nuts. Well, sometimes like it's just too mechanically complex for someone to understand on a two dimensional plane. Sure. You know, I can I can draw it fine, but when it's like layers and layers of gear trains and moving parts and armatures and people are like. What the hell am I looking at? Yeah. <laughs> like you but don't see it. <laughs> sometimes they gotta see it work, you know. And I get and I, you know, get my like little saws and files out and I cut, you know, pretty much a, a scale model out um out of wood. Uh-huh. And then and then they can see it work. Also a little bit for myself as well, because I like to be able to like turn the wheel and rather than having like my calculations, my calculations kind of done out on paper. Mm-hmm. is uh, it, I like to be able to feel it, see how many revolutions, you know, to open and close this door, for instance, or sure. how, how much leverage does this, uh, do, do do these bars have, you know, while closing this, this doorway or, or what have you, you know, it's nice to have a physical representation. Dude, how does your brain work? Hell, I don't like, know. <laughs> it's so, it's so exact. And the fact that like the math that you're doing to have it be like proportionate, it's like a tiny little Valhalla door lock in wood <laughs> to like the two story size. I was like, how did the, tr- the translation alone is nuts to me. I, so back in the day, I found a, uh, a draftsman's ruler. It's that oh. tiny little triangular one with all the different measurement sizes. Uh huh. And I didn't understand how it worked, but I was like, oh, I, I guess I'll just kind of create my own system. And I kind of just kind of created my own system, I guess. But I, I think it's that. basically how uh, like drafting works and like scale plan sets work, you know, where uh, like this little line on this ruler is an inch, you know, but it's actually like a 16th of an inch. And that would give you your like 16th scale. So, you know, if, as long as I, you know, all of these like little tiny lines equal one inch, I'm good, you know, yeah. and I would just kind of convert it that way, just kind of out of instinct. Sure. And I think kind of just here we are. Dude, how often have you gotten to where the moment of truth and it isn't exact or slightly off? Honestly, it doesn't. I'm going to knock on wood. Uh huh. The second after saying this, yeah. but it is. <laughs> And at the utmost rarity. And I'm not saying wow. this with arrogance. It's no. just the weirdest thing. But you know how they always say, like, you know, measure twice, cut once. Uh huh. I'm a measure a thousand times. Oh. <laughs> Think about it all night long. That's why. <laughs> and then cut. That's why. I obsess. I, I'm obscene uh, when it comes to just the the ridiculousness of of just you know, the perfectionism. I have yeah. a good buddy. His name is Russell. He's a big old guy, and I love him to death. One of my best best buds. Cool. He knows me really, really well, and he loves to come into the shop and just kind of make fun of like me spinning out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but he gives me good perspective, right? Like, yeah, like, oh, yeah. It doesn't need to be within you know a sixty fourth or a hundred twenty eighth of an inch. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. I'm just being ridiculous. <laughs> no, no, you're being exact, Max. <laughs> oh God, exactly ridiculous. It's it's that it's that dwarven intuition, right? It's everything's geometrical. You gotta 
There's a way. There's an art in the precision. Yeah. I'll make excuses for you. I'll do it. Thank you. Dude, Brian, I'm going to keep you around, buddy. <laughs> I'm saying. I'm going to stick you on Russell. <laughs> that's right. Bring it. I'm ride or die now. That's the one. That's the disclaimer for guests of my show. I always say, I don't have bail money, but I'll go to jail with you. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, man. It's a, it's a lot of fun, you know, and um, I really enjoy the design process. And now as time goes on is now I'm you know really trying to build up YouTube so that I can have a little bit more freedom mm -hmm. with what I'm building. Because whenever I design something, it's usually for a utilitarian purpose. Right. It's a, you know, it's a doorway, it's a chandelier, it's something mm -hmm. that someone needs. And and I design something as interesting as they will allow. Sure. In, in, you know, con within the confines of their personal style and their budget, which is hard. I bet. Usually I'm working for free just to make it cool. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, one day I'll be able to just like build from the source. Yeah. Really? Because dude, I'm telling you, man, I, I haven't even come out of first gear. I'm grinding my way to second right now. <laughs> I cannot wait to see what, what, what comes out, you know? And like, you're getting all of this like practice for like your yes. true, like, you-ness you know all these things and like this is not easy stuff you're doing dude i've seen the full build of that hobbit door oh who man. can do that <laughs> like that's oh, that's not it. something everyone can do just a fact like oh, i'm thanks. sure there are other people on the planet who might be able to do it big might the amount mm. of precision you're working with glass dude how much glass did you break any none no did see what i mean there <laughs> If somebody else did it, there's glass breaking, Max. All right? I'm no expert, but that's wild. Them's the rules, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I, uh, yeah, man, I'm actually very grateful. So, I, I, you know, the college was out of the question for me be, just, just because of the way my brain works, mm -hmm. my energy level, just literally every part of me sure. cannot be a student. But also, like, art school, like, it, I, I have mixed feelings when it comes to learning to be an artist, mm -hmm. you know, like I, I feel like, you know, learning skills. I think everyone is artistic in their own right. It's just, yep. what are you artistic in? Agreed. You know, I've seen people do spreadsheets that are like Picasso's, you know, uh -huh. but I'm very grateful that I, the, the path that I just kind of found people just coming to me to build them a staircase or a railing, whatever, mm -hmm. because I had to learn a lot of skills I wouldn't otherwise, if I had just had freedom my whole life. Sure. You know, like I had to learn so much, everything I've ever built. Like I've learned volumes on the Hobbit door, volumes on the Valhalla doors or, yeah. you know, the Iris chandelier, everything, always learning stuff. And now what I'm really excited is now I feel like in my prime now, uh -huh. I feel like my prime keeps moving, which is a wonderful feeling. Yeah, ideally. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like now I, I've cultivated all of these skills that I've, I had to learn kind of the hard way. And then I could bring that into my, my true voice, my true art. Yeah. So I'm very grateful. I'm like, I couldn't, I couldn't be happier with how it all worked out. Are you good at like allowing yourself to learn, like being okay with failure? Not, not in the moment. I get very frustrated with myself. <laughs> yeah. I feel you. <laughs> yeah. But then on retrospect, I'm like, oh, all right. High five. Yeah. High five me. There you go. Cause I, I find that's a, that's a, a hurdle that a lot of artists have issues that have trouble with is like yeah that sort of giving yourself permission to not be good at something oh, right away. There's a statement for the books, allowing yourself permission not to know. Yeah. That's a big one. Well, because we don't celebrate the journey. That's true. You know, like, like, and when I say that I'm talking about like maybe just Western world, I'm using huge generalizations here. Oh no, you're right though. But you know, like <laughs> the, the process is not valued. It's the outcome that is the only thing valued. Yeah. And that's a lot of BS, my man. Agreed. It's like, how do you even, how do you even with that mindset, give yourself permission to try knowing that like, oh, and when it doesn't work, how do you keep going? <laughs> yes. Oh man. I think everyone listening to that will, will take something home. Right. That's a big one, buddy. Wow. I just got like ruminate on that. Right. Sit, sit, let it, let it permeate. And like, you're working with things that like, I, so steals your thing. Oh yeah. Oh, I just love it, man. It, and there's just, there's something so magical about it. Like I never, I didn't like woodworking very much because it's so inconsistent. Sure. And, you know, like I'm, I'm worried about knots. I'm worried about grain and what's going to happen when all of a sudden it rains and there's too much moisture. Now it warps and oh gosh, Ugh. I, I, I don't like it. 
<laughs> I am not a fan. When people ask me to work with wood, I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what about an iron oak? <laughs> Yo, right. <laughs> but I um I, yeah, I love the consistency. I can rely on steel. Yeah. You know, when I when I couldn't rely on anybody else in my life, I was able to rely on her. Yeah. And, and um yeah, it was just I, I am so happy with how everything worked out. Dude. How nervous were you chipping away marble? Because you can't take that back. <laughs> like, oh, watching okay. the videos, I got anxiety. I was like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, I could have had a diamond if I you know, <laughs> yeah. put, put a lump of coal from the forge somewhere. I mean, it was <laughs> it was harrowing, my man, to say the least. Yeah, because you get one shot. Yeah. Had you worked with marble before? Nope, never. Why'd you say yes? <laughs> no, I, I've never. Well, I said yes because I, I had faith in myself. Dude, you know, and not like in this audacity sense, but in like a true sense, just like, you know what, like I've, 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 we've done a lot and I've, I've yet to be like truly stumped. Hell yeah. And, you know, it's been difficult and it's, it's taken me to the brink of my sanity. Yeah. You know, of like absolute breakdown, but then I'll have that eureka moment and then I've learned something and then now I've like just jettisoned myself forward. Yeah, now, nowadays, yeah, it's like, yeah, absolutely. Yes, I can. And, uh, but I was surely second guessing myself, um, (laughs) when it came to that break down the middle, Oh God, I'll never forget it. (laughs) (laughs) But then the absolute elation thereafter, sure, (laughs) the the, the absolute dopamine flood of just like, I did it. And then you just, you run it off, you run around, you know, do a little celebratory little cartwheel. Yeah. (laughs) Scream into the hills. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we gotta release it somehow, yeah. right? Just a mighty yop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's wild, dude. And it's just marble is not steel. Oh no, wildly different. I admire that. I admire you being able to like say yes because that's kind of the trick the cruel trick if you will of existence is confidence comes from the doing so it's like you get the confidence after you've done it yeah but it's the getting of it that like why i i wish i was confident before doing the thing and then i would feel better about doing the thing it's like no 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 there's the price to pay on the road totally and it's almost like you know you bring up being a uh, an actor or performer mm-hmm. and i was watching a really wonderful interview with uh, denzel oh and, amazing um, you know, the difference between, you know, him as, a, as an actor and him like on a stage. Mm-hmm. And, and he's just, he was talking like, you know, I, he's, I'm an old man and <laughs> I still get the craziest amount of butterflies. Yeah. And so like, no matter how much you say yes, no matter how much success you might find, you're still going to have those moments of, of that, like that self-doubt, those nerves, you know? So I, I guess just if I can give any advice in that regard is just kind of enjoy the ride, you know, Sure, <laughs> it'll work out. That's how that, that's the only way you get anywhere, right? You gotta, you have to move. Yeah. Yeah. Just take that leap. There's moments, man. Like there is just, there are moments that you, it is all too easy to just question everything. Yeah. <laughs> how did I get here? <laughs> mm-hmm. But I do notice it's happening less and less. That's great. Good feeling. And that's where the real art comes from, right? When you're untethered by yourself. Oh, yeah. You get out of your own way. You bet you, bud. Yeah. Yeah. When you, it's like there's a sense of surrender. You know, there we go. We're talking about bravery again. To, to just be able to surrender to the, you know, whatever you're doing. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, folding laundry, you know, just you surrender to the moment and just, you know, jump in. Right. But the big moments like breaking the marble or, seeing the hobbit door roll for the first time after a year of building the stinking thing. Yeah. There's that, those big moments of truth. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this works. <laughs> yeah. Hold on to your butts. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm totally thinking of like Christmas vacation. Yes. Plugging in the extension cord. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. You live in a uh, constant state of that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Too good, man. I'm not going to be able to wipe the smile off my face for a week after this. <laughs> You're starting to get the lines. You're like, I've earned these. <laughs> oh, oh, dude. 100%. So what brought you to TikTok then? Because that was where I first saw your work. <gasps> really? Oh, yeah. yeah. So you know, people around me are like, oh, gosh, you, you need to get on TikTok. Casey was telling me, you got to get on TikTok. I'm like, no. I was already annoyed with 
how vain I felt having an Instagram. Right. Like, what am I, a Kardashian? Like, dang yeah. it. But it would go. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you yeah, a quick story. So I, it was Please. really awkward for me to be in front of the camera, especially like talking to the camera. I felt really insecure. Sure. About, about putting myself out there like that. That was yet again another one of those big surrender leap moments. Yeah. I was like, what's the worst that can happen? You know, some people might laugh at me. Okay, sure. Right. So I started, you know, creating content, you know, hesitantly and did my thing. And then, you know, it started to, you know, it started to get like really positive responses. And I was like, oh my gosh. And it was, there was a moment where I got a message from a, a veteran. Oh, cool. And he reached out to me, did not have to do this. And it totally changed my outlook forever when it comes to social media and inspiring others really is he, he just you know, a very quick little message. And he was like, Hey man, um, I've been on really hard time after I came home from Afghanistan mm -hmm. and, and I, 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 this is dark, but I, I, I've been thinking about not existing anymore. Sure. And there was, there's no outlet for me. And, but watching your, your work has inspired me to get back into my carpentry. Oh, dude. And that moment, I'll, I remember I was, I was a weeping mess. I bet. That, it was at that moment I realized getting in front of this damn camera and, you know, saying hello, hello everyone. And, uh -huh. there and it is. running them through my, my work for, you know, the last month or whatever has nothing to do with me. Yeah. It's about them. It's about you guys. It's about anybody that needs that little bit of burst of inspiration to go out and, you know, live your truth, live your dream um, and, and just do something cool. You know, Yeah, that it was that moment. Everything changed for me. And then I was like, okay, let's, let's do this because I don't really half-ass much. Right. So <laughs> now, now we're going to whole ass it and, and we're going in. Yeah. How quickly did it pick up? Cause you, I don't know if you know this, you've got like 2 million followers. <laughs> That's a lot of people. Like if that many people showed up at your house, I'd be concerned. Oh my God. Well, we're throwing a party for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, it happened really fast and nothing prepares you for that. I bet. You know, because there's no, you know, you don't know what to, what to do, what to do or what to say, you know, besides just be freaking grateful. I mean, my gosh, all of a sudden, you know, you have a, you have a platform all of a sudden and yeah, but then all of a sudden you're now under scrutiny and I don't know how. Out of all of these people, all these beautiful fans or followers or you know, what have you, I, I mean, I, I love them all to death, but somehow it's super positive. There's not like, I, I can't think of maybe five negative comments in like all of the, all of the socials. It's weird. Wow. And, and I'm eternally grateful. I don't know what I did, but <laughs> I'm, I'm just grateful I did it or, or that, that they found me. But I think just authenticity yeah. goes a long ways these days. I think so too. You know, people, I think everything's just been so hyper polished mm -hmm. that it, it, people just need a sense of authenticity. I think so too. And it's real, you know, and that's something that like by design, social media doesn't really, it's about the end goal, right? Like the polished bit. Whereas there's something extra human about process. And I mean, dude, I'm not surprised you're not getting negatives because in the, in the best sense, you get what you give. Oh, you know, you're putting your heart out there. So like, that's, that's the nature of human beings, ideally. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, yeah. How, how can you, how, yeah. How would you, how could you beat up somebody that is like, you know, really exposing themselves out there Exactly. You know, in the best way possible? I, I, I don't know. It's, it's been a <laughs> hell of an adventure these last like year or two. And I'm just so grateful for it. You know, like it's, it's significantly changed my life from just a builder yeah. You just now more of like someone like we build community and we support people and, and oh gosh, it's just, it's the best. It's meant the world to me. I love that. Is there, is there pressure? Oh yeah. Like with that, with that number, there's gotta be. Yeah. I, I, I don't let it get to me. I'm thinking pretty good at um, procrastinating. I'm, I'm yeah. like a master <laughs> procrastinator. So <laughs> I feel bad that I don't make as much content as I, I think I used to. Uh-huh. Um, it's, it's a lot of work, you know, setting up the shot. Yeah, it is. Forging and building and, you know, just trying to do that. And now it take my work takes like twice as long now, but right. it's so worth it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like I, I feel bad because I'm not giving the content that I know I need to, mm -hmm. you know, because I know people always want more, right? Always. 
but I'm just, I'm just eternally grateful for everyone's like patience. Yeah. When I'm kind of in radio silence, like I currently am. Well, dude, quality over quantity, right? See, that's my plan. Yeah, you know? that's the way to go. Because that's the authenticity, right? The second that you start churning out things of... So for me, with artists, anytime I meet an artist, to me, the, the saddest thing for an artist to do for me is to ask, well, what do you want? I'm like, no, 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 you're the artist. Like, mm. we're here for you. What do you want? And then that is what I want. Even if I don't know it, I'm here for you. Oh, that's cool. You know, it's like, you don't want to see an artist try and emulate somebody else because it's going to be a less good version of the other thing yeah but if they're doing their thing that's why we're here you know oh that's that's excellent absolutely you know dude and you got how's speaking of like supportive cool people you got the lot next door oh my god you know Woo! you know everything i know everything max <laughs> <laughs> yes so that that's the craziest thing yeah so suddenly yeah like i was i was in my workshop and um, and there's yeah this big empty lot that's always been empty next door to me. I didn't know who owned it, but all of a sudden I saw like tons of people driving by, which my I have like live on a dirt road, so like no one's ever out here. Sure. And all of a sudden there's just <laughs> tons of traffic and people getting out and walking around. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. And then I got I found out that it was up for sale Ooh. like that day. So then I'm like panicking, like oh my gosh. You know, because for, first of all, like I'd probably get shut down if someone like developed it and built a house there. Right. You know, just for like noises. Right. Because I'm pretty loud. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, but then I was like, oh, my gosh, this would be an opportunity like so I can expand the shop. This is amazing. And it was way out of my price range. It was like, you know, $80,000 that I didn't have. Yeah. Um, well, that was like the, the sorry, that's where it ended up being. I think it started at like 60. Sure. And uh, which is crazy cheap for land out here. Oh, I bet. Um, in California, very cheap. So I knew it was going to go probably within the day. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh my gosh. So I figured some stuff out. I started moving things around. I like actually ended up refinancing this property just to like secure it for, for like six months so that I could like either work day and night to try and make it happen. And then someone told me, he's like, you should like do a GoFundMe. Yeah. And I was like, oh God, I, <laughs> I hate asking for help. Same. Like, I I could, I, my truck could roll over me, but I want to ask for help by all these people that stand around looking at me. Ditto. So it took a lot of courage to, to reach out to the community. And yeah, like five bucks at a time, we raised a ton of money, which was crazy. And we secured the lot. And now I'm in the stage of squirreling as much as I can away to start the permit process, the dirt work, the mm -hmm. slab, and then engineering the new shop. And that's when I could start doing more, um, more, uh, gosh, field trips for kids, doing classes, like weekend classes come out for a weekend to build something with me. I think that'd be so much fun. And then take it home, obviously. Yeah. And then, you know, I could, then I could build so much crazier stuff and, oh gosh. So I, Brian, we, since we're very similar age, did you also grow up with uh, Tim Burton's Batman? Oh, of course. Right. <laughs> of course. So you remember like, I'm thinking like Batman 2. Do you remember like the architecture of Gotham where it's yes. kind of art deco, it's like big rivet gangs and it just, it's just gnarly. Uh-huh. So imagine if like Gotham City became the metropolis it was like meant to rather than going into corruption. Uh-huh. Mixed with a bit of like aether punk. Ooh. I can design like the inside of the shop to emanate all of that, you know, massive cranes that look like just art pieces in general, you know, because like, then I could start like treating it like a set. Yeah. And then, you know, doing all sorts of fun content that way. Dude. Oh my gosh. Crazy hammering machines that are just truly ridiculous. Really go for it. I, I just, I cannot wait. That's so cool. We'll get there. Dude. I love that you know, kind of retro and just it, also equal parts art nouveau and brutalist. It's it's going to be all over the place. It's going to be very you, which is even cooler. Yeah. Oh, thanks, buddy. My last name is Balance. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of puns. Yeah. So a series called Maxed Out. Big fan. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you like that. Yeah. It, it just kind of like spurred up in conversation kind of naturally. And it was like, oh. Well, yeah, because, because I have like the flagship videos of, you know, where it's, I have like my editor and music composer and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, who, which YouTube like costs me, like I, I, I pay these people and you'll be for maybe the one day it'll start, you know, really paying off because I have zero 
interest in like income or anything like that. I just want to be able to have the freedom to build amazing things and inspire people. That's all. That's all I care about. And, um, and but I needed like another series kind of in between just, of just, you know, if you were to like just visit me in the shop. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I used to have a lot of visitors come to me in the shop when my, when it was elsewhere. It was in this like neighborhood, if you believe it. Oh. <laughs> um, but it was great because like after everyone got home from work, they would like walk over with like a couple beers and there they would just hang out with me in the shop. And that was a lot of fun. So I was like, how do I recreate what they experienced? Because it's like whatever wacky thing I'm thinking about or, you know, whatever is interesting me at the time, they got a crash course in the second they walked in. Because also I haven't talked to someone in like a couple of days. That's right. I'm all <laughs> charged up, you know? Right. <laughs> you know how it goes. <laughs> Dude, I, I love it. I love the also, like, especially with Maxed Out, the fact that you're not only making your own art, but you're also making your own tools to make the own art. Yeah. Oh, that's the coolest part about blacksmithing. You're like, I need a stamp for this. I'm like, what is the dude? Yeah, it happens all the time. <laughs> like, it's such an amazing thing. And this is why I love to do classes and things. It's such a nice thing to have to be, you know, to be able to wield metal. Yeah. You know, to be able to mold it, to be able to move it around. If you need a hook, if you need a pin for something like you can control it. Like metal, it doesn't have to have mystique around it. You know, you can move it and you can make things with it. You know, like, so if you were to take a class, it doesn't mean that you, you need, now need to be a professional blacksmith. Right. It's just now that you understand the principles behind now being able to, oh, I don't know, if like your roofing flashing is now bent out of shape, you can bend it back. You know, you, you're not disarmed by metals. Interesting. You know, I, I grew up with... uh like on micro and dirty jobs and uh -huh. his passion for, for skill and trade and, you know, just vocational training in general. Totally. And I, I, I've always appreciated that so much. And I just think, you know, growing up, you know, real blue collar Same. Um, and being surrounded by, you know, concrete contractors and, you know, truckers and stuff. Right. I have a real appreciation for just practical knowledge mm -hmm. and, you know, it's, it's a good thing to cultivate a good thing to garden you know they just you know, to really grow your wealth of knowledge and as many subjects as you can i agree and there's like there's got to be something else here that's kind of cool where like to the average person that's looking at metal they see it as immovable mm. like that just is the way that it is but you have a totally different perspective of like what you think is immovable is actually very malleable if you know how to do it oh it, it just takes a little know-how and then what you're holding in your hands is just infinite possibility. There's a book here, Max. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait. Maybe when I'm an old man, you can write. You can. You can write it. <laughs> yeah. The philosophies of metal by Max Randolph. <laughs> yeah, because I feel like I'm. I'm not gonna be done learning until I am like a foot in the grave. You know what I mean? Yeah. And even then, you're learning because you're like, what happens next? I'll oh, let yeah. you know in a second. <laughs> well, and like just to be a curious person you know like um i remember like my science teacher i loved science i i struggled through school like crazy math class forget about it mm -hmm. but um I, science was a blast for me because i it was more tangible you know it was also i just was very a curious person yeah but just really harnessing that creative mind that just that creative mindset that's that's something really valuable because I, I feel like you can get stuck it's very easy to get stuck totally you know to where you find yourself where you're you're, you're like wow when was the last time i really learned something yeah or had a profound just you know epif epiphany or something like that like that, that these are important feelings i think so too it's that propulsion of just like being alive really yeah. Oh, man. You know, as opposed to the mon the monotony that existence can become. It's like, oh, right. Yeah. Oh. Well, and it's a huge privilege that we're living in a world where you can, you know, like, I mean, there was once a time where, I mean, my goodness, if all of a sudden your, your, your whole kind of crew, we're, you're all moving, you know, like being nomadic or whatever, and all of a sudden all the firewood's wet, mm -hmm. what do you do? You Cry. know, like, we're able to, this day and age, just kind of be in cruise control. But we're not built that way. We were constant learning, constantly learning and discovering new cool ways to do things. Yeah, there's that extra stuff, you know? Yeah. The other oh, yeah. thing going on. Do you do you have something looking back? Because you're always growing. You've made a bunch of different things. Is there a project or thing you've built that you're like extra proud of? Ooh. Oh. Like really like, 
this one as of right now, this one here. Oh yeah. Well, like, you know, oh man, that's that each, each big piece, like each big project that I've like, I guess like documented, like, or I honestly, each piece, um, there's biz for gosh, for, for a long time, I wasn't documenting anything. I was just building stuff. Sure. Which is kind of a shame, right? Like I think yeah. <laughs> there's like archives on Facebook of like bad photos and stuff. Right. Um, <laughs> That'll actually be really fun one day to reminisce upon. Mm -hmm. But um, each one is just absolutely riddled with lessons. Yeah. There was one I'll never forget. And I and I would probably never sell it ever. Ooh. And it's and it's on my mantle right now. Oh. And it's this balancing thing. I've never really, I don't think I've even taken a picture of it. Really? There's this really cool sculpture of copper and brass and glass. And it balances on this, it's this flowing, almost looks like, I don't know, a, a very abstract modern flame balancing on like a pinpoint. And then you have this kind of really cool, like iron ribbon dance supporting it, holding it up. Dude. And there was a moment. So, you know, I don't mean to you know darken things down a little bit, but I, I don't have a relationship with my old man anymore. Sure. Just, it just, it didn't. It happens. Yeah. There's, there's yeah. just no way to have a relationship with someone, someone like that, or just, it, it wasn't doable. Anyways. Sure. I get it. When I got in our, like our last fight and, um, and I was, a, I was definitely, I was a young man, maybe early twenties. And, uh, I took enough material to create it. I had a dream that night and I'm not that type of, you know, hippy dippy artist where like, it comes to me in a dream. No, it usually comes from <laughs> just hardcore engineering and thinking, Right. <laughs> you know, it, it never happens that easy, but this, this one did. Oh. And I woke up and it was probably like four in the morning. So I snuck over there <clears throat> to the shop. It was on his property mm -hmm. and I was able to collect enough material to build it. And I drove to the coast, a beautiful place called Morro Bay where there's otters. And I just backed my truck up to the shoreline and I built it in the back of my truck. And I spent the whole day doing it and I just made it. And it was like, I, I could see it in my mind. I could see it, see it, you know, clear as day. And I just created and uh, that still stands as one of my most profound pieces. It was like one of my first like sculptures, I guess. Yeah. Just purely abstract sculptures. Dude. It was, um, it was very significant for me. That's so special. Yeah. I, I just, I love it to death. I mean, of course I see everything wrong with it, you know, yeah, you know, no. <laughs> as I look at it, but it's not the point, dang it. it That's it right. A, it, was a big, it was a big one for me. It's a, it's piv a pivotal moment captured in the real world in, in space. Yeah, exactly. And that's actually really a, a nice thing now that you bring that up of being able to have like visual representations of like benchmarks. Oh man. Tell me about it. You know, milestones of all the trials from, you know, some of these projects. And I'm like, and I feel like I'm right back there. So I, I feel very lucky to have these little milestone reminders, like bookmarks. Dude, I'm right there with you. All, all of my tattoos are that. They're like significant moments. Oh, you're like a map. I'm like, this is from this. This is from this. Oh, that's awesome. I have, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll trade you a story for a story. Oh yeah, please do. So I had a mentor that I was really, really close with talking about that. He's like a second father figure and he passed away mm. um, young. Oh goodness. And so for, for my first movie premiere, it was like three hours away from where he lived and he drove all the way to the theater to the premiere and he gave me and I'm, I'm holding it right now he gave me a one ounce piece of silver you know you get like from the mint oh that's so cool he gave it to me with a note that said for your silver screen debut oh my goodness yeah and it is to this day my most prized possession i have it on my desk every day and i look at it every day oh brian that is profound right isn't that like that's life that's that real stuff that like you know he existed we had this moment you had your moment that exists on your mantle. Like, yes, I love that stuff. Oh, buddy. Yeah. That, that is amazing. Also, thank you for sharing that, man. That, that is beautiful. My goodness. Life, man. Oh, it's a trippy thing. <laughs> well, I'm a firm believer that we're here for lessons, right? Agreed. I don't know what's after it, but um, we're here to learn. Agreed. And uh, yeah, it, it's an, it's amazing to be able to share space with people as long as we can. Yeah. You know, and like see them. Yeah. Really see them. I love that's it's that extra stuff, man. That magic. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, watch this. You ready? It's unexpected. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Look at I'll that. I'll tell you what, though. 
that's been a fun experience. So like I was always in the D well, not always in the D but I'm actually very recently in the D and D. I watched critical role for the first time, oh. like mid season one. I'm like, dude, what the hell is this? This is amazing. Yeah. Like I've been one, I've been waiting for this my whole life. Right. So then I got all my beer drinking buddies together and they're like, I, I was like, I, I'm, we're going to figure it out. We're just going to do critical role. That's all I knew. Yeah. 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 And, um, Oh, got the book and, but I've never done it. Like, I've never done it like on camera or anything. I've never sure. done like, an accent in front of like more than just <laughs> right. like three other people. Oh my gosh. Felt ridiculous. But that was such, that has been such a rewarding, just fun group of pals to just really bond with. How'd you come up with Beery's name? Beery? I, I don't know. I was just like, oh, I can't. came in it a just dream. It kind of happened. And then it sounded, it sounded kind of like, I don't know, beer, I guess. Yeah. Like, that's kind of <laughs> funny, you know, he's beery. Yeah. But then yeah. I got the spelling, B-R, you know, B-I-R-I. Uh, it's like, uh, I, this guy is turning into somebody. Yeah. I actually practiced him. I, actually, he was my first D&D character and he was kind of a scoundrel. Oh, cool. Um, He, he wasn't like the more like artificer, I guess. He was more of a rogue. Sure. Where he just had sticky fingers and he was just always out for a buck. Yeah. And um, For a beer. For a beer. And... <laughs> <laughs> And then suddenly I, I I introduced him into this party and I was like, no, I want him to make stuff, you know, because I love like when it comes to Tolkien, it's about creation, imbuing almost, you know, objects with sentience, you know, yeah. and it's all about creation. It's like, oh, I want to like somehow meld this kind of rascal character. Mm -hmm. I don't know, with more of like someone who really cares and is uh, through their past, not to give anything away, no spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> it's, it's gone through enough, you know, enough to where he really cherishes those around him and he doesn't want to lose them, you know? And, he, and his only way to do that is to make them things. That's his love language. It's his love language is gift giving. Yeah. And it, it's been a fun character to explore. I bet. How much time did you spend designing him? <laughs> Oh, Be Beery? Uh, actually, not that not, not much. Like He was already in you. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he came very, you know, like some characters, because I, I, I DM some characters, I mean, are off stretch. Sure. <laughs> Real challenge of, <laughs> of empathy, you know what I mean? Right. But he, oh man, he's easy as pie. And I love the Venn diagram coming together of like your sketches of like his equipment and his gifts. And oh. then just D and D and all of it, like I'm, I'm digging the overlaps. Oh, buddy, yeah, he's he's been a a real, a real joy. I think I'll be playing Beery for like ever. God, I hope so. You know, like I don't think I could ever put him up on a shelf. Like if there's ever a one shot, I'm I'm gonna be Beery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. Actually, now to think about it, speaking of playing, you can play the accordion. Yeah. What? How did this is so different than everything else? <laughs> oh no, I play a couple instruments. Yeah, I play like uh, I used to play uh, like acoustic bass for uh, like a little acoustic ensemble. I played uh, uh, right at high school. I ended up um, playing bagpipes in a uh, uh, Scottish pipes and drums, um, like, oh, I mean, big band, like 15, 15 pipes, pipes and drum, full drum corps. Dude. Yeah. And I don't know, I just like to create. And um, the accordion was so much fun because, well, it's a Anglo concertina. And uh, I just thought I I like to play like the weird instruments. Yeah, I, I played trombone for seven years for the same reason. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> it's like I want the one that sounds like a cartoon falling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want that slide. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. And I just I don't know. I, I I I just really enjoy music. I I love music. I've always loved music, especially um, like classical composition. But most most importantly, uh, like movie composers oh yeah you know, hans zimmer danny elfman i mean gosh you can go on forever but like yeah pretty much who shaped our childhoods mm -hmm. <laughs> john williams oh my goodness get that howard shore up in there oh you gotta have howard shore it, it, i because i think it's i'm not i'm not really into lyrics i i don't really think in lyrics like i i i can listen to a song for 20 years i have no idea what they're saying right, right. It's just an instrument. <laughs> I, I just this is not the way my brain works that's probably why i listen to like a lot of opera and stuff like that it's just an instrument but i, I just really like uh instrumental music because it just sounds like a an adventure it's a soundscape yeah it's a soundtrack to your life exactly like you go to the grocery store or you can go to the grocery store while hunting orcs bingo just oh my saying. gosh <laughs> you you get me <laughs> hey brian if 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 you could have someone narrate your voice, like Andy Duf Dufresne uh, from Shawshank Redemption, who would it be? Sam Elliott. Oh, that's I know. 
that was that was like <laughs> off the hip. How did you just have that holster? Like I spent a lot of time thinking about it. <laughs> oh my god! Well, shoot, now I have to think of what I. I know. Ooh. How about you? Because everyone says Morgan Freeman. I was like, no, I don't live a life that would coexist with Morgan Freeman. But Sam Elliott's Sam Elliott would be epic. But you have to almost it. have to be like almost like Western. You know, I'm saying. Oh my gosh, that's such a good answer. You know what? Who would it be? Who? Anthony Hopkins. Ooh. I love how he speaks. I could see that. His 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 rhythm, his cadence, the the timber. Yeah. He is remarkable. And he also is a composer. He he is just I mean, mm. all around a creative powerhouse. I much like yourself. Shut Dude. up. <laughs> Damn it, Dude, Brian. <laughs> you're one of those people. So like I think I agree with you. I think everyone has like creativity in them. I think by yes. human nature. We're just, yes. that's how we're wired, whether we appreciate it or Humans not. are creative. Agreed. But I, th- I have this, this, this title in my head that I've, I haven't run into that often without putting it at, in like a hierarchical type of thing, like a tier system. There are true artists that I've met. Few. There are, everyone's an artist to a degree, but for me, true artists are people who can't help but create regardless of the medium. And I can honestly say, you're one of probably three people oh. that I would say is a genuine, like, true artist. Goodness, Brian. Like, you're just in line, whatever your thing is. And, dude, I am so glad our paths crossed. Dude, I'm so happy now. You just about <laughs> made my heart explode. <laughs> just stating Buddy, facts. That, that really, that means a lot to me, man. That that really does. It's just, ah. Uh, you're so special, Max. I'm just saying. Shush. You are Everyone's special, dang it. <laughs> you are. You are. I don't care if you accept it. It's on record. <laughs> it's on record. <laughs> oh, no. But dude, just like that, we've been talking for an hour and a half now, pal. You survived. Look at you. My goodness. Yeah, that flew by. <laughs> I'm proud of you. I didn't know if you'd make it at the beginning. I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know, <laughs> actually, no, I'm like a. Uh, you know, if Woody's string was, you know, sp- you know, spun around backwards, so I may able to just pull my own string. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to get me shut up when you get me you know, fired up about something. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Dude, this has been a blast. Genuinely. Like this has been, man. Like, wow. You're such a good interviewer. Stop it. I'm a terrible interviewer, but I'm a halfway decent conversationalist. <laughs> oh, well. one of the same. Look at that splitting hairs. <laughs> rascal so before i release you back into the wild i gotta ask where can people find you online where can they find your stuff talk to me oh yeah thanks for asking so yeah max run out studios across all platforms youtube instagram tiktok uh, now threads apparently i you know just nice well we'll see where that goes (laughs) Um, but yeah you know just max run out studios just really uh, everywhere i have a link tree you can find uh, yeah easy peasy i love it hey hey Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show and stay up to date on new episodes, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter and Instagram. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find my demos, recent projects, and other stuff I'm up to. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. As speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on TeePublic to pick you up some sweet gear. And if you'd like to support the show more directly and get early releases while you're at it, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Ben, Chris, Daryl, Daz, and Victor. Your support means so much to me, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.